Are you ready for 2024? I'm excited. In about 12 and a half hours or so. Yeah. In about 12 and a half hours or so. It will be the start of a brand spanking new year. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you had to live 2023 all over again, who said no way? (laughs) Yeah. Are there things that you would have done differently? That's kind of a no-brainer, right? Duh. There's a lot of things. I mean, I know I've made some mistakes over this last year. I've had some wins. I've had some, some losses. Uh, but there are several things that I wish I could go back and, and do. And there's some things I even wish that I could undo that I've done. I mean, I think we're all that way. So as we look forward to 2024, I want to kind of discuss the God of fresh starts. Amen? I mean, no, no matter how bad 2023 was, we can't change the past. We can only look to change some things in the future. God's more interested in, in our future than he is in our past anyway. So I want to read from Isaiah chapter 43. Do you want to stand for the reading of God's word? Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Everybody there? Everybody ready? It's probably on the screen too, isn't it? Yeah. So Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Lord God, guide our thoughts right now. Help us, God, to to understand the truth of your word. Help us to grab a hold of you and to plunge into this new year with excitement because it is a new year of opportunities that you're giving to us. I mean, of course, we're not promised tomorrow. But Lord, if you tarry and and if we live, we've got a new year approaching us. And God, it's a year that you have plans for us. It's a year that you've got all laid out for us. And God, I pray that you would help us to understand how to start fresh how to start anew with you right here, right now, today. Work in our hearts, God. Reveal our sin to us so that we can confess and repent. So we can walk out of the building today ready to face 2024 side by side with you. Father, if there's anyone in the room that hasn't trusted Jesus as their Savior and Lord, I pray they would do that today and start the new year in a new relationship with Jesus Christ. Work in us, God, as we glorify you with our minds right now. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all go ahead and be seated. Remember not the former things. Forget about the past, right? Forget about it. I'm not very good at that accent, but that's all right. Forget about it. Close the book. It's done. It's over. You leave the past in the past, which is where it belongs. Like the great theologian Bob Seger said, turn the page. Come on, that was good. Is it going to be like this all year, this next year? I mean, y'all, come on. That was a good one. No, God's doing a new thing. And let's get on board with him and do what he is already doing, right? This morning, we're going to start over with with God. Uh, I have a confession to make before I tell you this sermon, before I give you this message. Lana's 
grandfather was a pastor uh, of a missionary Baptist church. And Lana inherited... Hey, see, I'm not lying to you. And, and Lana inherited his desk. We have it in our uh, kind of the dining room area thing. Anyway, uh, it's in there. And in that desk were some sermon outlines of his from years and years and years ago. And this little outline was written out on a piece of paper that was in that desk. So I don't know if it was his originally or if he got it from someone else. I have no earthly idea. He's been gone for years and years now, so I can't ask him. But this outline was there, and it was one of those that do, does the acrostic, S-T-A-R-T. And that's all he had written on the page was S-T-A-R-T, and he had his uh, the, the, the points, the rest, what S stood for, T and A and R and T. And I have taken that and adapted that to... Uh, us today. So it's kind of cool to me uh, that, that I get to use something that, that he did. Uh, I don't know, it's just kind of special. So let's, let's get started. The S in this acrostic. Am I using that right? Yeah, it's not an acronym, it's an acrostic. That's right. Yeah. The S, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. How many of y'all have made excuses this last year? Let's be honest. We all have, you know. And if you're going to start fresh, if you're going to S-T-A-R-T, fresh with God, you've got to stop making excuses. You have to stop blaming everyone else. Do you ever do that? Well, it's always someone else's fault, right? If he would just blank, then I would be able to blank. Or if they would just act this way, then I could be, be, be nice or, or whatever the case may be. Hey, we got to stop rationalizing our failures. We have to stop, uh, stop playing the victim. You know, a lot of people get a victim mentality. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. And they're all out to get me. And it's everybody else's fault. And, and there are people that, that act this way all the time. It wasn't my fault that I was driving 60 in a 40. It wasn't my fault that I overdrew my checking account. I've heard it. You've heard it. You know people that do this. we got to quit being the victim. I want to be really, really, really clear, okay? 2024 starts at midnight tonight. And starting right here, right now, today, actually starting before you were born, you are responsible for you. Okay? If you're driving 60 in a 40, that's on you. It's on you. You're responsible for you. Now, the truth is you can't always choose what happens in your life. I mean, sometimes stuff just happens, right? But you can choose how you respond to the things that happen in your life. So we've got to stop making excuses. We got to quit making excuses for our sin, excuses for everything that we want to do. Proverbs 28:13 says, "Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy." Now, I love the way the Living Bible paraphrases this. I'm not a big, huge fan of the Living Bible, but it paraphrases this. It says, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. That's good news for you and me. Admit your mistakes to God. Just admit it. Own it. Confess it, and you get a fresh start. Isn't that cool? A fresh start with God. You confess, you get a fresh start. But you know what? That's so hard for us to do because no one wants to admit that they are wrong. I remember the saying that I've said it a million times. Well, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. I wasn't wrong. No, it's wrong. We always want to pass the buck, though. We live in a society and in a culture that loves to shift the blame to always to someone else. We blame the environment. We blame the government. We blame our parents. We blame 
fate, we blame biorhythms, we blame El Nino, whatever we can think of to blame. We want to shift the blame somewhere else. And the truth is, we, we think it's always someone else's fault, but the truth is, you are responsible for you. So let's stop making excuses. In 2024, let's own it, okay? Let's own it. Let's quit making excuses for everything. God says in, in uh, 1 John 1, 9, he said, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What an awesome God that is. So the S means stop making excuses. Stop playing the victim. Ad admit your faults to God. Admit your sin to God. And he will help you make a fresh start every time. The T, take stock. I thought that was an interesting thing to say. I would have probably said uh, take a life inventory or something. But take stock. To make a fresh start, you need to take stock of your life. Evaluate your life experiences, your successes and your failures. All of it. Ask a few questions to yourself. You know, what is God doing in my life? What's he trying to teach me? What are my options? What am I good at? What do I need to improve on? Galatians chapter 3 and verse 4 says, Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Paul's talking about this. Now think about all the things you've suffered in 2023. You've suffered. We all have. If you call it suffering. We've all suffered. Was it in vain? In the Message Bible, Eugene Peterson uh, has a paraphrase called the Message Bible. And I like what it says. Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing? It is not yet a total loss, but it certainly will be if you keep this up. You didn't go through 2023 for nothing. God had a purpose behind everything that you dealt with. So I want to give you just three questions that you really ought to write down and, and, and take stock of uh, as, you, as you think about these things. First, what have I learned in 2023? What did I learn? What did God teach me in 2023 that I need to carry over into 2024? What did I learn from my successes and what did I learn from my failures? If you haven't learned from either one of them, then you're not understanding life. Not at all. And if you don't consider these things, you will continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So take stock. Another question. What are my assets? What have I got going for me? What do I have going for me that I can use to glorify God with? I mean, you've got health, you've got freedom, you've got mental stability. Well, a couple of you don't, but most of you have mental stability. Uh, you've got friends. You've got God. Man, if God's for you, who can be against you, right? You've got a church family right here surrounding you that loves you. You have your own family. You've got all kinds of things that, that are assets for you that you can use to glorify God in 2024. Once you answer that question, third question, where do I get the help that I need? You're going to need help. Church, you need people to do life with. You really do. You need, it takes a village to raise the idiot, and you're the idiot. Right? Yeah, I'm the idiot. I need a village around me. Okay? You need an accountability partner. Someone that's going to call you out when you sin. Do you have an accountability partner? <laughs> me too. Me too. And I've got some other guys that are accountability partners with me. And they call me out. And it stings. But it's good for me. And it's good for you. 
You need an accountability partner. You need Sunday school friends. I know that's an old, old term, Sunday school. It's supposed to be small groups now, right? You call it whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. You can call it a milkshake if you want to. It makes me no difference. But, but you need these friends in your life. And you, will, you know what? You need them to be praying for you. And let me tell you, your Sunday school friends, they will pray for you. Amen. Yes, they will. And you need to pray for them. Y'all need each other. We need each other. We all do. You need to get to know your deacon. Deacons, raise your hands. Look at them. What a motley looking crew that is, huh? But you know what? They love you. And they want to serve you. You need to get to know your deacons. They're all right. They're pretty good fellas. You want to get to know them. Because you have them on your side. And they want to help you. They want to love you. And they want to share life with you. Now, understand this. Just because you've experienced something doesn't mean that you've learned anything. So you need to take stock in your life. Or as I would say, take inventory in your life. Don't let your life experiences from this last year be wasted. God wants to use them for his glorification and for your good. All right, let's go to the A. Act in faith. For 2024, act in faith. Launch out into a new territory and, and, and act in faith. If you want to go with God, you're going to have to take risks in faith. You're just going to have to. In Matthew chapter 9, two blind guys were following Jesus and, and they said, Have mercy on us, son of David. And in Matthew 9, 29, it says, Then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. According to your faith. Now, had they not have had faith that Jesus could heal them, they wouldn't have went away seeing but they went away seeing because they had faith that Jesus could heal them. Nothing in your life will change until you launch out in faith. Believing God for what he says. The person that believes I can and the person that believes I can't are both right. In faith, I can. Outside of faith, I can't. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying here, though, okay? I'm not saying that you can name it and claim it. I don't believe in that mess, okay? If God didn't say it, you can't claim it, period, the end, okay? God's not a genie that grants your every wish. You can't go rub on the lamp and poof, God pops out and grants you your wishes. He doesn't work that way. He's not your personal genie. He's not a candy machine where you pop in a prayer and, and you get your wish. It doesn't work that way. Real faith is believing God for what he says he will do. Okay? If what you think God needs to do does not line up, with this book right here, it is not from God, and you cannot claim it in faith. The only thing you can claim in faith is what God says. That's what faith is. Believing God and, and obeying Him. Now, in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, The heart of man plans his way. But the Lord establishes his steps. What that means is you make your plans, right? But you have to let God direct your plans and let God establish your steps. As God directs you, you obey him. And guess what you just did? You acted in faith. That's what that means. So we need to act in faith in 2024. And finally, uh, the R, not finally, next to finally, the R, 
refocus for 2024. Refocus. You need to refocus your thought process in 2024. You need to retrain yourself how to think. If you sat down and you evaluated your thinking process from this last year, I believe you would come to the conclusion that there was a common factor in most every decision that you made. S-E-L-F. Self. For real, come on. We're selfish people. Most of our thoughts are focused on self and self-satisfaction. I mean, let's be honest. We are selfish people. Do you agree with me? I ain't selfish. Yes, you are. That's why you're all sore about me saying that you're selfish. You're so, well, 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 if I could just this, then everything would be okay in my life. Or, or if, if I just had this, then my life would be complete. If I could just get them to think this way and do this, then I would be happy. That's selfish. If I could just get a new car, if I could just get a new house, if I could just get a better job, if I could just get out of this financial jam that I'm in, most of our focus is on ourselves. And Jesus says in Matthew 16, 24, and again in Mark 8.34, and again in Luke 9.23, if any would, would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's just the opposite of what you've been taught all your life because you've been taught that uh, if it's going to be done, I'm going to have to do it. If, 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 if it's worth doing, it's worth doing myself. Or, it's all about me, and if it doesn't help me, then why should I be involved in this? We want to make the focus of our lives about us, and Jesus says, you're wrong. The focus of your life is to be about Christ. And he'll magnify it and glorify it. So Paul in Romans 12, 2 said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Well, how in the world do you renew your mind? I'm glad you asked. How do you focus on God all the time? I'm glad you asked. By spending time in his word, you don't spend enough time in the word of God. I'm just going to tell you that right now, okay? I don't spend enough time in the word of God, and I'm in it all the time. I'm telling you, we don't spend enough time in God's word. But if we want to renew our minds, we need to focus on his word. We need to meditate on his word. Another way, you need to show up for Sunday school. You do. Or, I, mean, I mean, small groups. You need to show up. You need to be here. You need to have a personal quiet time. Every day where you spend time in silence, just focusing on God, reading his word, and letting him speak to you. You need to have a time of prayer all the time, all day, every day. Uh, you need to get up and you need to be praying all the time with God. How else are you going to get to know him? Without his word, without, with, with, without his people, without his word, without prayer. You need to make God as big a part of your life as eating dinner. Okay? You don't miss dinner. We don't miss that, but we miss time with God. You want a, re a fresh start? Refocus your life on God. And now finally, the T. Trust in Him. Trust God in 2024. Well, I trusted God in 2023. Did you? Stop relying on yourself. Don't depend on others. Don't depend on your bank account. Definitely don't depend on my bank account. Don't depend on your great name in the community. Because it's not that great. I know people. 
Don't depend on your prestige. Don't depend on anything else. You tried that in 2023. You tried that in 2022. You tried that in 2021. You tried that in 2020 and got COVID. You know, you, you tried all of that. None of that worked out so well. So in 2024, let's stop trusting in everything else and let's trust God. Let's depend on God. Some people don't seem to get it. They try and they try and they try. They try, they fail. They get up and they say, I'm going to try harder this time. And they fail again. And they get up, well, I'm just going to try it even harder. And, and they fail again. It's like banging your head up against a brick wall. And after you bang your head against this brick wall about 30 or 40 times, you, you raise your head up and you say, that wall's coming down one of these days. And you just keep banging your head over and over again. Isn't that stupid? That is the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing the same way over and over again, expecting different results. Let's try something new. Let's trust God. Let's quit relying on ourselves and let's trust God. Psalm 20 in verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Church, New Year's resolutions will not give you a fresh start. Trying harder is not going to cut it. Self-help is not any help at all, really. Fresh starts don't happen by trying. They happen by trusting, trusting God and following him. So how about it? Starting right now, right here. Are you ready to start a fresh start with God? Now's the time. In just a moment, we're going to stop and we're going to have an invitation Tim's going to come up and take my place. Uh, and we're going to have this invitation. And that's a time for you to reflect on what God has been saying to you today. Maybe you're one of those that play the victim. And God said, stop. Quit making excuses. Uh, maybe you, you, you haven't been trusting him. You're trusting everything else. I don't know what God is actually dealing with your heart with right, right this moment. But I know he's dealing with you. And during our invitation time, that's the time for you to respond to God and his word. That's your moment. Maybe you've never trusted Christ as your savior and made him the Lord of your life. You come up here and, and you see Tim and tell Tim, hey, I, I, I want to trust Jesus as my savior and Lord. He'll walk you through believing and confessing. He'll walk you through that. He'll help you with that. Whatever it is that God is saying to you, you don't wait. When our music starts, you come. I'm going to pray. The band's going to come. I'm going to pray. And you come. Even before we start. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. And God, you've spoken to us here in the last several minutes. And Lord, I just pray right now that we would, we would turn our hearts towards you. And that we would trust you. And that we would follow you and respond to you in a way that pleases you. Lord, if there's anyone in the room that hasn't trusted Jesus as their Savior and Lord, I pray, Father, that right now would be that time that they would enter into that saving relationship with you.